Hello everyone and welcome back to Technic the Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. Not sure. Please. I kind of know what I'm doing technically. You don't. I just got my hands on the hat for Rock 5A and Rock 5B and also Raspberry Pi 5 where you can install basically f and connect five SATA hard disk drives to a Rock 5 board and uh, basically set up and run a NAS. I heard you guys. So last NAS video that I did, some feedbacks I got was it is still overkill, it is expensive. But just remember in that video, that's not exactly how I intend to use it. I have uh, Proxmox installed on it with TrueNAS as, as one of the VMs on it. In this video, we are going to go on low budget stuff, right? Uh, I also saw some viewer were commenting where like they don't have that much data, right? Or they don't really need such a NAS with, I don't know, eight, 18 terabyte hard disk drives. I heard you. So you're right, right? Not, not everybody needs anything like that. So maybe someone just needs something like this, right? That's all they need. They need a Rock 5 or Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna open it up now. And a hat, that's all they need. And they will connect two, one, two, three, four, maybe five hard disk drives and set up, a, not necessarily TrueNAS, I don't think you can. So you're gonna install uh, some other alternative, which we are going to do in this video and just run a simple NAS, right? Uh, not everything needs to be complicated, expensive, high-end. Sometimes you don't need that, so that's understandable. So in this case, I did this one because creating the RAID takes forever, right? I don't wanna make the video long, so let me start. This is what I got, all right? I got everything new for you guys. This is a cooler, active cooler for the Raspberry Pi. So this is the cooler. This is a brand new Raspberry Pi 5, 8 gigabytes, right? I'm not gonna use the one I use in videos, right? That's that bad boy is right here, right? So I use this as like base for benchmark and also this boots with the NVMe SSD. We're not gonna use this. So I'm gonna do everything from scratch. So this is what I got. Raxa Penta SATA hat. Penta because it can support up to five. One is eSATA, it doesn't matter. So it is compatible with Raspberry Pi 5, which there, there, people have done it, right? People have done this connected SATA to Raspberry Pi 4 and other boards, but this is, I believe, the first. I believe, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section. I was kind of fast. I immediately saw this, bought this, and I just received it. So you can install this on a Raspberry Pi 5 with Raspberry Pi 5 performance. Remember, it's much faster and better than the 4 and other alternatives. What we're going to do, we're going to unbox this. We're going to unbox this, unbox that, and install everything fresh, brand new from ground up, okay? And uh, one of the things that I'm going to try to do is actually I'm going to try to uh, cut down the length of the video, if I can. All right, so what you need is a knife. We take that out. Let's take this. I just want to make it small. There you go. Unbox this. See what's inside, right? Taking this out. Nice. Okay, this is the eSATA. So this is the header connector. And from what I read somewhere, it can provide uh, the power and the data to this uh, to this cable, okay? Bunch of screws and standoff stuff. So this is the board. This is the one, two, three, four, correct? And one connects, eSATA connects here, the cable, and gives you one more. So you can connect five SATA disks to, to your board, to a Raspberry Pi. And you can power this, which will power the hard disk drives, right? You can power this using this Molex connector if you want to. There are some adapters that you don't necessarily need a power supply. There are some uh, power adapters you can buy and it will provide a tw the Molex 12 volt pin that's used for like powering external hard disk drives. You can go with that route or you can plug here a 12 volt uh, adapter, which that's what I had or laying around. So I am using that in here. As, as you might be able to see here, 
I have connected the the 12 volt uh, power adapter and that ugly cable goes to the outlet. So yeah, keep that in mind. So you're gonna get this. Yeah, so they give you two. So this is the Raspberry Pi connector. That, that's where, what the Raspberry Pi expects and does have port for it. And this is the Raxa stuff, right? So the Raxa, the other one that I'm using, Rock 5, that's the header they are using. It's actually very nice. It does have this notch as well for locking. It's nice. So we are going to use this cable. I have done that for the Rock 5A Pink, which does have 16 gigabyte RAM. And we had already, we did a video on it. You can, if you haven't seen it, go check that out. But I am going to show you how to do it on Raspberry Pi. Well, to be honest, because Raspberry Pi is a little bit more common and more popular. So I'm going to do the popular one, but yeah, you can do it to the other ones as well, uh, such as Rock 5A, Rock 5B, Rock 5A Pink, which is this board. And then we get a lot of, uh, you know, screws and stuff in here. I'm gonna pour that out, so we're gonna use those. The next thing is actually taking the Raspberry Pi out. Yeah, so this is a brand new one. I haven't used it in anything, so I'm just gonna dedicate this to this video. So that's going to be the Raspberry Pi 5. So I bought this active cooler, so they ship with this okay so you really don't have to have anything yeah so you don't need the thermal pads you don't need anything uh you take this out you put it in there and connect the the header and that's all you need to do so let's do that real quick okay i believe it goes this way so i'm going to remove this so the fan goes to the other side okay right this way okay and then you basically push this yep there you go and you push this there is really nothing just to push that's it okay yeah we take this cable put it this way okay we got that this is installed now and uh yeah that's good enough for cooling the raspberry pi 5. the next thing to do that's the height. You can go both ways this way. Yeah. Okay. Let me do this real quick. I'm not going to use the back side, so I don't uh, plan. Any, I don't have any plans for the back side, so I will use it this way. Yeah. So this is all I'm doing. Okay. There you go. That was easy and smooth. So you will end up with this. You already have the Raspberry Pi 5, you have the cooler installed, and you have the hat installed, okay? And then we can screw this if needed. I'm, I'm gonna leave it. Uh, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I am not going to use this in, in a real sense because I already have enough NAS and storage, but yeah, I will, I'm doing this just for you guys. I just want you to see that there is this option available and uh, you can do this if you want to for a small, uh, affordable uh, and uh, fast NAS. Uh, and uh, I believe we are kind of on the uh, limits of the cost, right? Because you need a computer, you need a processor, you need something that can have a network stack you need a CPU, you need all that stuff. So Raspberry Pi 5 is kind of cheap, right? It's, it does have very good performance, $80. The hat was like $44, so 120 bucks right here. And the cooler is I think 10, 10 or something like that. I honestly forgot, I will check it and leave it maybe on the link or something. So let's say $150, all right? So the whole thing, the high performance, uh, because we have the eight gigabyte version, eight gigabyte RAM, and uh, yeah, that's all you need really to set up an S and a, and a 12 volt power adapter. It will come down to cost of the disks, right? Hard disk drives. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these away. I'm going to open up a couple of these. I just want you to see the capability, right? So I, I am going to actually remember these eight terabyte hard drives that I did not use in my NAS and I went with the 18 terabyte ones, yeah. So we are going to use those. Best is just to do it 
before putting the hat on. Yeah, you have to pull the tab and take that out, okay? Take that out and bring it out. And then we are going to... Okay, so this side, this side, the golden plate side should be facing the board, okay? So we are going to install this, push it all the way. And then we close the, push the lock mechanism in, right? All right, so something like that. So we take this locking mechanism, this side, right? And you have to line up these two, okay? Like this, there you go, so smooth. And then lock, that's it. That's all you need to do. And now we are going to install the hats, okay? Okay, something like that. All right, looks neat, doesn't it? All right, now let's continue unboxing the hard disk drives. So what I prepared is actually an SD card, right? This SD card image does contain Raspberry Pi OS and the light version. So the NAS that we are going to install is not supporting the desktop version. We're gonna talk all about it. Anyway, I installed it in here. I'm gonna put that before I forget. Okay. Okay, the cable is installed. Now, what we are going to do is simple. Just uh, flip, and as you can see, you just uh, literally pull and push. Okay, so as you can see, some are going to be bent, right? That you see they, these connect. So in order to keep them aligned and straight and proper, uh, they have provided this. So what we can do is we can flip this around and just screw those in. You will end up with something like this. Neat looking NAS, right? So that's the whole NAS. Now you wanna NAS have like eight hard drives. As I said, you can connect this and add the fifth one. I'm not gonna do it, but you can, right? So you can connect this to here. Now you get the fifth one, all right? So you can connect another hard drive here. I'm not going to do that. So I already have, I want it to be compact. I wanna show you the small package, right? This. This is the whole NAS. It does have the hard drives, does have a Raspberry Pi 5 with eight gigabyte memory, and it does have a cooler. The best is actually to install a fan on top of this. Uh, I don't have it, but as I said, I'm doing this just for you guys. I'm not gonna use this in real, uh, you know, in real world, I'm not gonna use it. Uh, so I'm just doing this for you. I will uh, recommend if you're following this guy, you wanna do the same thing, put a fan on here, okay? Uh, or just keep it in a cool environment or like where the air flows, uh, you know. So here when it's running, it's actually in, right in, in front of the air cooler. So I don't know, you can see it, but there is a flow of, a, uh, you know, chilly air. Anyway, so this is here. And uh, yeah, so all I need, and I also put the SD card in for the OS, and we are going to start the Raspberry Pi. I brought a 12 volt uh, adapter. Uh, I got it off of something else. And the USB-C. So we are going to boot the Raspberry Pi and connect the power supply, the 12 volt. And we are going to w wait for it to boot. In the meantime, I am going to steal the USB keyboard and mouse from the other board, as well as HDMI cable. Okay, so we're back and uh, we, I have installed the fifth hard drive as well. As you can see, uh, the four lights are on and the fifth one is in the back, as you can so fully see. In. Yep, there you go, okay. So all five hard disk slots are populated now. And if we log in, And if we go to sudo shell, you can see that one, two, three, four, five devices are already there. Okay. Now we are going to go to the admin panel. Uh, if we just do IP address, we can get the IP address is 172, 168, 170, 178. Okay. So let's switch to the admin panel. Okay. And this is what you're going to get. 
The default username and password is open, uh, admin, username is admin, password is open media vault, okay? So once you log in, uh, this is what you're going to get. Initially, dashboard is empty. Uh, so what I did was, the only thing I did was just going to the system and going to the plugins and just searching for ZFS and I installed this Open Media Vault ZFS plugin, okay? That's all. We want to get as close as possible to TrueNAS. So we, we installed the ZFS. You can use software rate. This one is using software rate with MD admin, MD ADMA, ADM, MD ADM command. So you can go with the software rate, uh, which I did on this one. I will show you that. And on this one, let's try ZFM and uh, ZFS and let's see if it works. Okay. So we are going to go to first, let's make sure the disks are also visible here. Okay. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, five, eight terabyte NV, uh, sorry, SSDs, right? Super fast uh, SSDs. So what we are going to do is we're going to go to the ZFS and we are going to create a pool and let's call this the data. Okay. And for the devices, Okay, so these are not initialized. Let's go back to this. Yep. So only that one. So for this one, we are going to erase it and we're going to do it quick. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to do it again. Main date, main pool, right? and we are going to use A, B, C, D, and E, okay? So all devices will be used and not going to enable compression, okay? Let me do one more reboot after that delete. Okay, so we have, let's go to the storage, ZFS, pools, create, add pool, main pool. Okay, we need to select this. Okay. So now it is pending uh, for our approval. As you can see on the screen, if we are using one, two, three, four, five, eight terabytes, so five times eight, F, we are not obviously, it's not literally eight, seven point something, right? So let's go with that. Eight terabytes, so 40 out of that, uh, we are going to get 28 terabytes, okay? Uh, by the way, hold on a second. Did we choose the Z? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were going with rate Z1. So let me delete that. Sorry, I didn't pay attention. Okay, so I initialized the disks and deleted everything. Now let's do it again. Let's go to the ZFS, go to the pool, add a pool. We are going to call this main pool and we are going to make sure that this is Z2, not Z1, uh, to have a better protection for our data. And let's, uh, uh, let's not force it, let's see. Okay, that's better. So we are going to get 21 terabyte of storage on SSDs. So keep that in mind. And if I approve that and apply that, now, as you can see, all the lights are blinking and it's going to start creating that ZFS pool for us. And ZFS pool with RAID Z2, remember that. So very close to what I did in the other NAS video uh, where I also created a RAID Z2. And uh, okay, that, that's, that's it. So the data is online. And let's go to the file system. Yeah, it's already mounted. So we already have the storage. To be honest, ZFS is a lot faster in creating the pool. And this one, I, I think it does have like still eight, uh, six hours or so left. Let me show you very quickly. So if you go to the storage, if you go to software RAID, this is what I'm doing, right? So I have, this one has four, eight terabyte SSDs. Sorry, four terabytes. So four times four, right? Is it? Four, let me see, let's check that. Yes, four, 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 yeah. So 16 terabyte was available on this one, okay? 
and I created a software RAID, which internally it's MD ADM and creating the RAID in Linux. So that's a RAID 5 and I'm getting 10.9, let's call it 11. So I'm getting 11, but it is taking forever. So I think like six more, five more hours, six more hours or so is remaining on this one. But you can see the speeds. Can you see the speeds for that? It's very fast, it's making the, allocating the rate, right? On this one, it immediately uh, created the, the ZFS pool. So what we can do is we can also create a shared folder, right? So you can give it, uh, call it a data and uh, select the main pool and it's going to be slash data. Administrators and others going to have read and write. Uh, others actually no access. So let's go with administrators read and write, users read and write and no access to the others. And save that. And also we have to go to the services, Samba, settings, enabled and save, okay? So we have to enable that as well and apply the changes. Let that go on. But as you can see, it's really fast, honestly. I'm impressed, right? We were able to create, install the hard drives, boot into Raspberry Pi OS, run one script, literally one script on this. On this one, two commands and one script, that's it. And we were able to get Open Media Vault running on, on both of these. And uh, now the share is up, right? So now let's create a, a share and we are going to use that data and I'm not going to change anything except the Samba version if it is here somewhere am I missing where is it Samba version. okay so we are going to save that oh a Samba version is in the Samba service settings sorry I got confused so let's apply this Okay, so that is done. And uh, yeah, so if we go to the Samba settings, that's right here, should be some, yeah, here. So let's go with Samba 3, and we don't need any of that. Okay, hold on here now. All right, so we created that. Now let's see if any of this is actually working, right? Let's let's now uh, load that uh, IP address uh, 78, right? 172.16.1.78, okay? Hide all this stuff. Oh, okay. So it's coming up here. Let's use the default username and password. Okay, that doesn't work. So we have to create, uh, I guess, the users in here. And go to the users. Yeah, oh, so I have the technically, that's the other one. Let me see if that technically works, actually. Nope. Okay, let's create the user. Call it. I guess, unsure. Okay. Save that. Okay, so we created the unsure. And let's go to the shared folder. This one, permissions, unsure. Yes, read, write. So we give read, write access and also technically and uh, yeah, let's not confuse that. Let's go with unsure, okay? Give the read right to that user. Let's try again now. Okay, stop in here, okay? Stop in here and stop in here. I don't know. And also what I'm typing, what I'm using. Okay. All right, let's do unsure. There you go. Okay, so we got access to our share and if we go to data, there you go, we have it. So what I'm going to do now is actually, uh, let me create a large file, right? And basically I'm going to say fsutil file create new test 
and let's do 1024 times 1024 times 1024 times 10 okay paste enter open 10 gigabyte file okay now we copy that we go over here and paste Ta-da! Okay, so we got a uh, one gigabit internet, remember, and we are capping it. That's that's literally the speed you can get uh, out of one gigabit connection, and that's the Raspberry Pi gigabit internet. Okay, so we created a RAID Z2 with five SSDs, and it is running on the PCIe Gen 3, and also we installed Open Media Vault very same thing but different setup like this one is a software setup a software RAID and I am able to as you can see it's consistent the, the 10 gigabyte is consistent and it does not drop so we created basically an S right so imagine you you run this you run this and you keep it as is like this that one also has a external drive but this is smaller and simpler so you keep this in a cool room, in a room, in a rack, in somewhere in corner of your office, and you can put all the movies, family photos, uh, you know, everyone's uses are different for an ass. And I have, I'm using Photo Prism. I love that project. All our family photos are there every time we want to watch movies and videos, for, you know, we go open that up. I have Plex and Jellyfin in my house. So if you want to do that, you can cut and run this, put it in the corner and forget about it come through the SMB share or web, web admin interface and like copy your files in here. Uh, there is a lot of more capabilities actually. Let me show you, yeah, that copy is over. Let me show you. So if you go to the system and to the plugins, there are a lot of other plugins in here and there's also extras which you can enable Docker. So potentially you can run Docker on this bad boy in, uh, on these. I haven't tried it. I'm not sure it's going to work or not, but you can certainly uh, install and run Docker on, on, on these. Uh, and uh, it will give you ability to run Docker uh, containers as well. And uh, you will be able to, I'm not sure if that works, well, but we'll see. And then you will be able to just go to the plugins and uh, install as many as plugins as you want. So here uh, you will see there are like backup stuff, uh, antivirus stuff, compose. Uh, so again, related to Docker, uh, CPU temperature stuff. So let's install that as a matter of fact. And I want to show you the dashboard part, right? So this is also, also see how the installation of the plugins go, right? How I install ZFS. I didn't record that part, but I literally clicked on the ZFS plugin and clicked on it. So end of, end of line, that's it. So we install the plugin and it reloads itself. Oh yeah, so we're done with this part. So I'm gonna close this so it doesn't show again. Uh, what we can do is go to dashboard and go to settings page, okay? And in here, just enable the things that you want to see. And uh, I believe the CPU one might not be visible in uh, initially, but yeah, let's just uh, enable everything. Uh, let's populate our dashboard. Oh yeah. So as you can see, we got our load averages, the temperature 44, the memory is barely used. So eight gigabyte, I know that one is eight gigabyte because Raspberry Pi, this is 16 gigabyte. We are ma not making a dent in the memory. And uh, there is also network interface stuff in here. There's wireless. Oh, by the way, yeah, I, I know I connected it with, with the ethernet, but if you want your NAS to be wireless, you can absolutely do that as well. And then there is the ZFS stuff in here, a LAN and WLAN and all that stuff, right? It's all work absolutely beautifully. ZFS RAID Z1 and software RAID, both are ready to go. And that's all you need, right? I just wanted to show you that it is absolutely doable. And uh, yeah, so if you wanna go with the budget uh, setup, that, and not necessarily budget, maybe like as the other people said in the comment section in the other video, you don't really have a lot of data to, to use a big NAS, you can go with this. And it is absolutely uh, usable as an NAS. I would recommend if your data is very important, maybe not use SSDs maybe, 
uh, for long longer uh, you know lifetime maybe go with the you know uh, the regular hard drives uh, and using maybe the gold Western digital gold or something like that so okay right before I go I just want to show you that you can also actually very easily run docker containers on this and uh, that's what I did okay so as you can see on the screen I installed and ran the photo prism as I told you I'm using it personally in my real NAS and uh, it is a very good software that you can use to host your own uh, family photos and videos and load it up on a TV load it up on your phone or tablet computer laptop doesn't matter and it will play them show you the videos and also it does have face recognition and all that stuff anyway I just wanted to show you the docker and docker compose both works on the uh, on these devices and on the open media vault as you can see on the screen okay so you just have to enable the compose and that's what you're going to get you will be able to see uh, have a control over all the containers right over here the volumes the containers everything is going to be listed here and you can control them so this is a very powerful computer basically it's a full-blown NAS now Yep, I just wanted to show you so you know that it works and uh, that's all I have to say. Anyway, uh, the NAS is up and running and uh, both are working perfectly. Uh, this one is ROC 5A pink and that's Raspberry Pi 5. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.